Hi, I'm Marna McManus. I'm here to teach you about how to make sushi. Uh, sushi means sticky rice. Um, it doesn't mean raw fish. That would be the sashimi um, Japanese dish. So today we're learning how to take uh, rice, make it sticky, and then turn that into a food that uh, a lot of people like, especially when they know it doesn't have raw fish. Um, but I will be teaching you uh, how to do the rice, how to make the um, rolls in your traditional way, and then also to, we'll do an inside out roll as well. So first things first, we have to put our rice into some boiling hot water. So first things first is I have to actually boil the water. So we've got the uh, three cups of rice. The ratio you're gonna want to do for every time you make sushi, I don't care if you need to do two or three batches, two cups of rice to three cups of water, okay? There's just no way uh, I've ever been able to do even modifying that. It just doesn't work out nearly as well as going ahead and doing the, the, the recipe that, I'm, that I know works best. And it's, it's two cups of uh, rice to three cups of water. Now, I did this off camera. I actually rinsed the rice. So it's a practice that I didn't know about. Uh, and until well into my adulthood, and I don't remember quite why, maybe rice was instant, or maybe I just wasn't, I probably wasn't paying attention to be honest. But rice is kind of dirty, and I, by kinda I mean very. So we just wanna make sure that the rice is going to be clean enough. Um, when you put it into um, a fine mesh strainer, such as my favorite old trusty one here, um, then you can just run under the tap as much as you want, get that all uh, clean. And you'll notice that the runoff gets clearer. It's quite murky before you've given it a good rinse. So I like to do that to make sure that it's um, just gonna taste a little cleaner. And I like to do this with every grain that I'm gonna cook. Um, and as soon as the water is done boiling, I'll be able to throw that in there. And it's, it's, it's like 20 minutes, if that, for the rice to cook which is probably why I waited until I started the video to even turn the element on, because as I mentioned to Coralyn when we were starting all this, is it takes about the amount of time to cook the rice as it does to get all your veggies prepped anyways. So I'm gonna get all the, you know, avocados, everybody's favorite on sushi, cucumbers, another huge favorite. Um, there's carrots, there's peppers and I even have cream cheese and green onion as you can see so that is a little little favorite that some people um, that I make sushi for quite love is the is the cream cheese and green onion on there and sometimes just cream cheese with cucumber and avocado people love whatever combinations and the thing is this is so inexpensive and I'm not saying sushi is like super expensive but some people you know they can drop a pretty penny on sushi so um, it was about nine years ago when I just decided I have to have it. I have to have it and often. And so I decided to reteach myself how to make it because of course I tried once upon a time before. And the success that I got in March of 2011 was so profound that I was making sushi two, three, four times a week. I was going home on my lunch break uh, for my one hour lunch break and starting the rice, chopping the veg, rolling it up and eating it and making it back to the office in, in that one hour time frame. So this is a beautiful thing because, you know, you could think, well, maybe I'll have to practice making sushi on a day when I am uh, have more time. But really, you don't really need a whole lot of time to make it. I think the real block is the know-how for people. And speaking of blocks, a friend of mine gave me a rice cube and I'm just gonna show it to you now because I'm probably gonna forget to show you how to use it anyways. And so apparently we would just wanna put some nori into this thing and it makes a little cube of sushi. So if anybody wants uh, to, to get really creative with sushi, they can. We'll try and see if I have time with that one, but I've got uh, what smells like warm water. I'm not hearing anything, but dump that in there and stir there. So now that the rice is in, I will turn it down a slight, you know what, I just want to stir that a bit. I brought some of my own utensils. You know, everybody has their favorite things. I didn't need to bring my own like cooking pot from home, but I did need to bring my strainer, which is um, when you like to work with uh, fresh grains and 
and um, you know any kind of uh, sprouting if anyone's doing any sprouting the fine mesh strainer is absolutely essential and I do like to put sprouts on the sushi I just don't have any uh, today so I wasn't able to do that but while the rice is cooking we're gonna get some veggies cut up and <clears throat> before I do that I'll quickly mention what I'll be using today is uh, a product of I believe like Superstore or uh, the one that the Estevan store, Weyburn, uh, Weyburn's store hasn't carried this. They do carry a version of these, which is from Costco, but they're the miniature guys. They're so tasty. I don't like them by themselves. I don't understand the people who do, but they're so good with actual sushi. Like it's a bit more painstaking as you'll see when I demonstrate it, but it's, uh, so all my six year old will eat is sushi that I made on these little guys because it's just um, different it's slightly different texture and they I, they do make them as like a you know a crunchy snack so they have to have therefore more flavor I have a one tablespoon here and I'm gonna put the sugar so easiest ratio to remember is the two cups of rice and then of course your three cups of water but two tablespoons of sugar and I you know keep keep that a little bit and one tablespoon of salt. I brought mine from home here. I, I have a giant jar of Himalayan crystal salt that I just fill this with um, because we use it for other things, not just for cooking. We have lots of salt at our house. And so it's also pink, which in the case that of this rice I'm making right here, it's gonna be a little just like pinkish. Just the, like, it's almost like just pink enough for me to know that it's well mixed in with the rice. So, you know, we're covering all of our bases here. And then the other two tablespoons to remember. So it's actually not two teaspoons of salt, don't forget. One teaspoon of salt. So you got your two dry things. I always like to do the salt and the sugar. So two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna take, I'll definitely make sure that this is printed for everybody. And then I'm going to take my two tablespoons. Uh, uh, it's rice vinegar if you have it. I use apple cider vinegar. Um, truly, I can't tell the difference, and I do have quite uh, discerning taste. But I use apple cider vinegar because it's what I have in my house, and it is just a little healthier um, in terms of you know the benefits you get in the gut. Because to be honest, this also is pink, and it also is going to even have some of that. Um, what they call the mother that's in apple cider vinegar. So I've slopped on the table and I will just ignore it. <laughs> okay, so that's our, that's, I like to do this first before I cut the, the veggies up because um, I like that sugar and salt to dissolve quite nicely in the, in the apple cider vinegar. So we've got, you know, the green onions I'm gonna use. Uh, I'll just, you know, I've taken the ends off, but I'm just gonna cut that down the middle this one's pretty tiny, so I'm just going to leave it. So we'll do like a couple rolls that have cream cheese and green onion. And what I'll do is get that to put my veggies on once I have them ready. And another favorite, of course, on sushi, I've just brought some veggies from home. Um, I found these lovely carrots at co-op that are nice and, uh, you know, like garden fresh seeming, I'm not quite sure. I peel um, the carrots and the cucumbers, and I actually, what I do is I core, uh, the cucumber I core as well when I'm putting it on sushi. This is mainly because if the sushi isn't all eaten right away, it's gonna last a little longer. So that, um, that seedy, watery stuff on the inside of the cucumber. As you'll see when I cut them up, also not so um, not so great. So for the carrots, some people like to, you know, cut them in julienne or whatever the fancy terms are. I'm all self-taught, so this is how I do it. I take the, uh, the peel, my favorite peeler, and I just do this, and I do this with the cucumbers too. Um, not every time. Sometimes we do want the nice chunks of cucumber. But I like to do, uh, this is actually one of my favorite techniques also for salad because I don't love chewing carrots, to be honest. 
and I like a lot of roughage nonetheless. So if I can have a hint of carrot in every bite, but also have it be just a little less challenging, then I enjoy that more. And I think on sushi, it's just so delicate. Like it almost has that nice, uh, you know, texture that some people might want from the fish. You can do so many things to carrots too. Like you can take them in whatever cut you want, but you can do this to them and like marinate them to make them taste like fish. Anyway, that's a thing. And then uh, I usually like to eat this. I'm not gonna do it while I'm teaching because then you'll have to hear me talk with my mouth full. But dogs like them too. The other thing I like to do is uh, for red pepper, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'd ever put green pepper on sushi. I put peas, like green peas, snap peas, huge hit. Uh, like I said, sprouts, um, lettuce. I've put lots of lettuce on sushi. I've also done um, like the like the hot peppers and the long chili peppers and banana peppers. Um, but this is a this is a favorite, right? Because it's just your nice simple red bell pepper. And then of course I don't know I don't know any other way really than to do long thin strips because that to me is super yummy and then a little goes a long way too. So even if you don't have more than a quarter of a pepper, you can, you know, make it go quite far on a, on a whole run of sushi. This batch of sushi is going to get us about six rolls. Um, you can, if you really are deliberate at the outset and you don't have any of your rice like sticking to the bottom of the pan, which reminds me I should check, um, then you, then you can get seven rolls from it if you're just, you know, conservative with how you put it on there. So, so when you're planning to make your sushi um, and you know you're gonna need to feed, you know, 12 people, 10 people, even eight people, those six rolls, seven rolls isn't gonna get you very far. So plan that, you know, that you're going, once you finish getting your rice done with the one batch, turn it around, do another batch of rice so that you can just keep the, keep the train rolling as they say. So I'm going to cut into the cucumber now and we are going to do the traditional, oh, and that was scary for some people who have better knife skills than me, I'm sure. Trust me, I'm careful. And I'm gonna do the peeling on the outside, although I agree, you can and should eat the skin of the, uh, of the long English cucumber. I do like, um, for the purposes of sushi, to have, to have that be kind of a little bit less, um, uh, texture wise I just prefer it to be not there so we're gonna just take the long strips I'm just gonna cut that inside out like I mentioned and that's uh, nothing wrong with it it's getting eaten just not in the actual sushi so um, some people might not bother if they know it's all getting eaten like that day they're gonna just be like well why would you even go to all that work and maybe they want to peel it the way I described so or showed you how with the carrots. I'm gonna do a few, like for one roll, I'll do those. And then, um, I wasn't thinking that through, should have done that first. And then I'm gonna do some of these for another roll. So I'm only gonna cut what I need today because we have, um, well, hopefully the library staff will wanna eat some sushi. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be feeding people and I know what they like and we'll just, I know it's not like, uh, too complicated to, you know, use your imagination, get a variety of different things going with the vegetables. Um, so we'll just leave it at that as far as those are concerned. So we've got our rice. Our rice is still cooking. Let's work on the avocado now. Now I'm just gonna take that, cut it in half, and get it ready in the way that I do it when I make sushi. Um, this is a beautiful specimen. Look at that, wow. I'd love to know anyone's adventures in growing avocados uh, from seed. I've seen a few of you have done it here in Weyburn, and it's so cool. I have a lemon tree that a, a lady here grew and let me have, uh, Little, well, I guess it's a seedling still, but stuff like that. So I've just, I diced it like, or sorry, scored it 
and then I went kind of under and made a second layer. So that'll be nice little bits to be able to throw all across the, the sushi. Okay, so I realized while this rice is just finishing up, I need to tell you one of the ways that I know it's done because I mentioned earlier that you get more sushi rice if you're really careful at the end of the cooking because sometimes it'll stick to the bottom of the pan and that becomes too like chewy and you just can't use it. So I like to check while it's still cooking and you see all those bubbles at the top, I like to sort of pour it like, you know, like turn it on its side and see if um, any water comes, you know, forward to see if it's done cooking, but it's still showing water and I don't want it to overcook, but it's a, it's almost like an avocado. Um, there's a moment of perfection and you know, there's, there's, it can be a little too watery or it can be, um, a little scant in that you're not going to get, you know, that extra half, maybe half cup of rice that sticks to the bottom. So it's, it's a delicate balance ultimately. Um, but while I'm waiting for that, cause I honestly think it will be done in a minute and I just want to have your attention while I continue checking, cause it is, uh, if you haven't made a lot of rice before, um, or even if you have sushi rice is it's different. Um, interesting fact though, you can make sushi out of any kind of rice. Uh, people like the short grain, uh, for the sushi but what will what in terms of what becomes sticky rice it's it it is all about that apple cider that vinegar and that salt and that sugar i use cane sugar too i don't know if i mentioned that but cane sugar is uh yeah that's just about ready cane sugar is more flavorful like i mentioned apple cider vinegar and sea salt also more flavorful as well the uh, cane sugar and then um that's that kind of translates to all of your cooking if you invest in better ingredients like in you know higher quality vinegars vinegars you know have um been proven to show that their friendly bacteria benefits our gut like apple cider vinegar um higher quality salt that is going to have more minerals in it that kind of stuff it's all going to make a difference in your um not just how you feel because like you know you're gonna have the benefits of better ingredients but also just in the in you'll have i think more refined taste buds if you give yourself the sprouts if you give yourself the higher veggie meals you already notice that happening but if you have uh if you for example if you switch to like salad dressings that you make yourself um with healthy oils and healthy vinegars and healthy sugars and healthy salts and you know sometimes what if you've taken my salad class fresh grated garlic and ginger and even chopped up peppers and onions. Like it, it, I have done it all when it comes to making a salad dressing, um, having a, having a bowl of just romaine lettuce and everything in the dressing because I used my magic bullet so that all that time would be saved in the actual eating of the salad. Um, those kinds of things, you know, some people only get like 15 minutes to eat their lunch. So having, um, having your, uh, pantry or your fridge full of these like awesome ingredients to be able to know how to do things like that uh, it, it should be taught to the kids too because we're not just you know like serving our taste buds uh, or our guts but when it comes to the palate being satisfied with all five tastes um, I truly believe you can uh, you can enjoy food more and be more satisfied than if you, um, you know, just ate it the same way all the time. If you have more variety, if you have more uh, flavors, then, you know, I think the brain does something differently there when it comes to those uh, ingredients being, you know, critical. At some point, you just have to, you just have to have the uh, better stuff. You just have to have the higher quality stuff. I mean, yes, you can eat too much of the good stuff. Don't even get me started on that. But it does appear we have uh, no spillage. <laughs> so I actually, this is what, how I test it is I actually can, you know, you can turn the rice on its side and it's just like solid lump of rice, right? So I will get my handy favorite tool. Uh, this is just wonderful for folding anything, this tool, but I like to take it. Oh, it's nice and soft. And I don't believe I have had it stick to the bottom. Might be on the watery side, but look like 
like that's good that's not going anywhere that's not going to be uh too watery and i mean i have i have a little stuck to the bottom and i have a little questionable watery so you know what all in all i'd say that was a success because yeah like a little bit um because i was talking too much okay so i'll put this in the sink to soak and i have been known to use that rice that's stuck to the bottom um to you know give to my dog he loves rice I know, I feed my dog vegetables and rice. And sometimes, well, almost all the time, the crusts of my six-year-old sandwiches. But anyways, we'll get this fancy mixture in nice bowl of rice, nice bowl of sauce. I'm going to marry them now and integrate them. So I'm just gonna dump that all over. And I just love it, I just love it. Now I'm going to take that and just hold it in, like just try and make sure that I'm, oh, I got a good whiff of vinegar there. Um, trying to make sure that it's all evenly going through uh, because we want to make sure that every last bite has the flavoring and it's definitely a huge difference. Like if you forget some of the salt or you put too much, uh, one time I put too little vinegar and uh, my customer didn't notice, like the person I was making it for didn't notice, but I noticed and um, they loved it and it was so good, but the, the ratio is just perfect with the two, the two and the one. Um, you can get away with less seasoning uh, in terms of flavor. Most people are just happy because they're having sushi, but that stickiness, oh, it's just, oh, it's just critical. So I have this nice and hot, it's gonna burn me if I touch it with my hands. But one of the things that we have with sushi prep that you're gonna need is a bowl of water. Doesn't seem like any, well actually, if you try to do sushi without that bowl of water, <laughs> good luck with that. You gotta have it. It's it's like, um, I, I don't even know. I honestly don't even know if that was in my the, you know original recipe that I trained with um, to make sushi. Uh, it had to have been. But working with the sticky rice, you have to use your hands. And anyone who's done, I guess, any kind of baking or any kind of um, work in the kitchen where they've had to think in a creative problem-solving way, they may have encountered this conundrum where if I touch this, my hands are going to stick to it. Like dough making and stuff. Yeah. Sushi rice is like that. You have to have okay have to do that okay so you got uh, I would just like dab dab wipe wipe and then you're gonna take it and like spread the the rice across this like I, I lumped it on in a you know almost too liberal a way because it's so warm it's actually warping this nori now so that was me talking too much again because look there now I can get a little bit onto another roll because I didn't decide to make sure all that's on there. So there we go, a nice, ooh, it's gonna be a nice, um, hot, well, I guess moist batch, like not mushy in any way, but not dry either. And I don't think that the sushi chefs that do this professionally ever have the inconsistency that you're gonna get with homemade, but like I said, you can save on so much, um, uh, well, see, for me, it's not about saving on the money as much. Yes, I'm really cheap, but for me, it's about the fact that, like, say, I don't know, 10 bucks is going to get me not just two rolls or one roll, it's going to get me, like, uh, oh, six rolls, seven rolls, anyway, so... Sorry, I just had to rinse off my hands. There's gonna be a little bit of having to go to the sink. I'll replace this water probably once during this process as well. So, since I have it sitting here, I'm gonna take a chunk of cream cheese and I just, I could use the knife, but you know what? We're gonna give it a nice liberal, I just took a chunk and I'm just gonna smear this all along here and make sure that this whole uh, eighth of a cute, um, eighth of a, I'm drooling. Like you seriously, 
I, I, sorry, but I do drool when I'm teaching uh, food. I don't know how they can teach food without drooling, but I did, I took a chunk of that and now it's all on here. So it's going to have a nice, generous, cheesy element. And then what the best friend of cheese, of course, being onion. Um, if you didn't know that, then you must not love Greek salad as much as I do. So there's that. And now we're also going to take the cute, we'll take, I did, I did a few more of these chunky cucumbers too. Well, while I was taking my musical interlude to do some entertaining antics for Coral in there. Um, this is the, uh, I guess we'll just call it, oh man, what's the word? The skinny cucumber? Okay. And so we have that cream cheese is also going to taste amazing with red peppers. So we'll do a fancy little one of those. And I mean, like, does anybody really want a, a sushi roll without avocado? I do a few. Like if I'm doing six, eight rolls for a family, yes, there's going to be like one or two rolls that doesn't have avocado, especially if they prefer like a cucumber roll or um, like sometimes I'll even just do up tofu like, you know, like, um, like a stir fry, like a ginger tofu and I'll throw that on there too. So the variety will come out of the... Uh, like the, the variety in the rolls will come from out of the variety that I happen to have in my kitchen half the time. But if I have a lot of really nice veggies, like mushrooms are tend to be pretty great on this particular roll with the cream cheese. So then I will like, I'll balance it out based on what I have. So if I happen to have limited options, there's probably going to be avocado on most of my rolls. Um, it's also extremely yummy. So they've got, uh, I just did that without talking about how I roll. I want to do um, a few rolls so that you can see, just see me doing it. And then I'll get into the technical stuff as well. Like, yes, I spread it all out and everything. We saw that, but um, I'm going to leave those and not cut them up until the end as well. So I'm using this sushi nori that I mentioned comes from the Loblaws stores, but I know like, we can get this kind of stuff. Um, we carry the sushi rice, for example, my husband's um, Weber Natural Family Healing. We do have sushi rice on hand in bulk for sale, but we're just waiting for some of the nori as well. Um, but yeah, 891-8676 if you want to talk about products, what we have. But for the most part, um, most of what my husband carries is like superfoods and um, like supplements that are all, um, you know, well-researched and everything. So we just have, um, happened to love buying things in bulk when we're ordering anyways. And so he repacks things and we have fun. Um, I just, we just love being able to see people. It seems like it's been so few and far between this year and, you know, you kind of have to stay in your bubble and stuff, but with, uh, doing things in a non-contact way, it's still a really great opportunity to, you know, see our friends and neighbors and support local business and all that. So we have another roll here. Now this has been loaded up. It feels like super heavy. And I just have this feeling that everybody's gonna want to see an inside out roll. Um, so I'm going to do that now before I forget, because trust me, I will forget. So. I'm going to just take a third cutting board so that I don't have to worry about the seeds that I'm going to use. Um, like California rolls uh, traditionally don't actually have the crab meat on them. So California rolls is going to be more like imitation crab meat and your, maybe your cream cheese and whatever. I don't know. Like it's been so long since I've had one, but you're going to want that, um, you know, that avocado and that imitation crab meat and all that good stuff on there. But they do them inside out, right? Anybody who knows their sushi knows inside out is the way we do things. So, um, I do have these like rolling mats. Never use them. I couldn't tell you how to make one of those work for the sake of, 
I, I don't understand them. So it doesn't matter because I use parchment. It's my best friend in my kitchen for so many things. Um, and the reason I use parchment is I, I, cause I don't understand how the seeds and everything, oh, the rolling mats are, I'm going to leave the rolling mats here at the library if anybody wants one, to be honest. I have no need for them. So I'm just going to pour the seeds onto here because I don't know if that's how I usually do it or not. But then I'm going to take that and put it like on the seeds and like just keep, I probably could have done it the other way. You know, there's no one way to do everything. It's, it's sort of like, you know, you can play around with that. But the ultimate goal or the ultimate point being that you're going to get your seeds all over your rice here. And that way, when you roll it up, especially that outside part is not going to have um, like all the rice because the sticky rice has to be covered in something on the inside out rolls. So now you've got the rice all covered in the seeds, but you want to be able to put the veggies on there. So let's just do like an avocado California roll because that's what I do. I'm not a big fan of um, any fish my mama didn't catch because my mom does some fishing. So why would I eat any other fish, right? <laughs> now this is tons of avocado. So what's going to be good with that on an ava, on a California roll? I'm thinking even just this nice, we'll pretend it's fish and we'll just call it a day. Texture wise, we're cutting, we're pretty close, right? Those who love fish any chance they get might, might feel differently. So instead of having things be, of course, done, just rolled up, I've got the parchment to help me out because I'm going to tuck that in a bit tighter now. Okay, so that's just parchment is just helping make sure we can shape this into a nice tidy roll. And I'm just going to keep rolling it and tucking it and rolling it and tucking it. And I, I think that must, must be what the mats are for. But then I've got this lovely guy here. And of course, the seeds didn't have to go on the whole thing. I could have just put the seeds on the outside part. And that's, of course, if you're in a situation where you need to be more conservative about it, then definitely wait and save that for the end. I'm pretty sure my husband has more chia seeds where these came from, so I hope he doesn't mind that I took them. Okay, so anyways, I don't know if I needed a new <laughs> mat or not, but that is an inside out roll and cutting them will all be done sort of as one thing but let's put another roll together and i shall replace this water because we like having it be clean and i like it to have uh you get kind of like chunks of avocado and stuff in in that water so it's just a really nice thing to just change it up and it's something I don't have in my home and I probably never will, but for those of you that have the, like the island where you have, you know, the sink that you can just do your prep work with and you don't have to cross your kitchen to go to the other sink, um, you're blessed because, you know, not everybody has that. And, and uh, in our old house, we aren't really um, like able to renovate. There's just nothing you can really do about it. And so I absolutely um, love it when I get to work in a kitchen where there's uh, pot fillers and, and prep sinks and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's a, a dream kitchen prize you can always enter me in for. Um, but for now, you know, I am happy that I have a kitchen and that I have mostly the know-how to make the food because I believe that is actually wealth and you know, knowing things about how to do things is, is a wealth. It's a different kind of um, riches, isn't it? Okay, so like, let's put some avocado on there, right? Having an avocado roll by itself is a great way to ensure the kids get some because not every kid wants all the other stuff. Not even my teenager, like my teenager doesn't even like the mushrooms per se on his rolls, though he's not going to turn it down. But if he got to pick his own toppings, he probably wouldn't choose mushrooms, but avocados, I think, please almost everyone, unless they hate avocados. Funny story. My husband not only doesn't like avocados, like for him it's a texture thing, um, but he 
also doesn't like seaweed. So when, when I make him sushi, and I do, he just doesn't have it with seaweed. He has had rice cube versions, and for the most part, he's had the bowl of rice, which is sushi, just sticky rice is sushi, and he's had like the chopped up veggies and sesame seeds, and, and he loves the wasabi and the soy sauce. So, like, okay, like, we're good. We, as long as we can get that, um, that wasabi, I think we got the whole, the whole uh, essence of what sushi really is. So, so I'm doing just an avocado roll here, I think, so that whoever eats this has variety, <laughs> has that nice palate, uh, it's almost palate cleansing. I would have to say to have um, just an avocado roll just like if you have a just a cucumber roll some people prefer one of those in the mix uh, as a palate cleanser in between enjoying something that's quite you know like rich and has a lot of uh, things going on in your mouth this one is um, avocado roll is just the answer to that so okay so now how to get like a fat roll, obviously put more rice on. Overall rice consumption will go down in terms of how many rolls you'll be able to make, but you'll have, um, you know, you'll have your fat roll. Some people really like those. Um, the, the getting more rice on it though, I wouldn't go thicker. I would just cover the entire thing, okay? Like from top to bottom, it just cover the whole thing in rice instead of stopping an inch kind of where you're gonna put your filler. Um, just, just do all the whole thing. And then with the filler in there, it actually ends up being that fat roll that, that you love. And, and the skinny roll, same thing. Just put like a, yes, as thin a layer as you can get is always helpful when it comes to trying to go with the skinny little rolls for whatever reason people have, like some people are just, they need to make a lot of sushi. So like I said, you can get more rolls out of it if you do it this way, but I would, what I'm doing is a nice kind of in between both because I have not a ton of rice on here, probably my usual amount of rice, but I'm covering the whole thing. And we're, it's almost like the faster you go, the more it works. Um, so we'll just, okay, so that one is almost perfect. Well, nothing is ever very perfect, but but that's the beautiful thing about working with things like sushi. It's imperfection at its best tasting, um, because as long as you have the <laughs> as long as you have the ratio, it tastes good. So I would say that with the raw chocolate too. Is you can't really mess up raw chocolate, um, mostly because you can melt that back down again. But this is almost to the very end, and so. Let's go with an all veg without the cream cheese and cucumber. So we've got our fat, uh, fat cut, <laughs> fat cut cucumbers. And how about a bunch of those yummy carrots? Now I used to like painstakingly, like, you know, lay them all out. Once you've cut these into little pieces, there's really no need for that. So save yourself the time and the stress and just like throw it on there and then we'll do some red pepper oh and maybe some avocado right yeah well let's do the tiniest bit of this avocado will be saved for the last cream cheese roll yeah because we're literally down to one roll's worth here and this one little bit can be for this roll because it is going to be an epic one okay this big guy is getting rolled up and I'm just gonna be tucking my, my very best to tuck all these under. Cause of course we're dealing with like, like usually there's a, like a bit more roll over, right? Well, this is a fatter guy, so he doesn't roll as well. So we're just wanting to tuck that in. And I had water on my fingers from having washed my hands. And I think that actually helps get the nori kind of stuck in there. So it doesn't want to come apart on you. And look at that. And it's still not as fat as some of them, but like all of these are pretty fat, but like, yeah, I'm, that wasn't as great an example, but you get what I'm saying. You just, 
you can pile it on and you can spread it all the way across and you're gonna get a bigger roll. And for those who like maybe just have, okay, for my lunch, I'm just gonna take a sushi roll. And like when I cut it and package it up for people, I cut a whole roll into the pieces and then I saran wrap that. So technically a person could say, this is my favorite kind, that's what I'm taking, or take half out of one and half, of, you know, take a mixture, but they just want that one bit. Um, a fatter roll fills you up a little better. So now another method I have for the cream cheese roll is to not take the cube like I did last time, but it's to just take a knife and like, like spread it on. So I'm actually spreading it a little bit further in here so that I can kind of go across and ensure that there's a nice sort of sticky blanket. Oh, and there's some Nori coming off. Very forgiving stuff Nori is, okay? Very forgiving. So yeah, that's fixed, nice and repaired. But it's gonna give us a nice um, grip zone for the veggies. Um, and I'm doing this before the rice because it all, it, it may be a subtle difference, but it all does turn out slightly differently. So it's nice to have, and I'm just going to take all of this leftover stuff and load it up with that, um, prior to the rice. Cause I know I want to make sure I save like, yeah, like I'll have enough to do a couple of the mini rolls just to show you because honestly I'm gonna save that avocado for that too because then you well see the little rolls I do that and that's two rolls worth of avocado because that's how small they are so good we set that aside and then I can still use this avocado again just try to make as much go as far as I can to make sure I have everything so then I don't have to open another one with no sushi left to roll. Okay. Oh, Marna. Okay. Well, whatever. It, you get the hint of it still. So like I, I like having, even if it's just a hint of avocado, I think people, um, I think people appreciate just that little bit in that bite. So, okay. Now take that and we're going to just moving this around and I mean really having watched this I, I would love to know if if uh, how many times I've taught this I, I just I really hope people can um, you know take this and and run with it and do it themselves um, some people that have taken my class like have made sushi before and they were more or less just curious you know what I did differently or they wanted to learn how to use the rolling mat to do them inside out. And I was a grave disappointment to them. But I think ultimately what we want from this is that that craving people have for sushi. I think it's, it's the seaweed personally. I think we all need more things like that in our lives. So the cravings people have, they think it's the wasabi or they think it's that avocado, which for me, I have to admit for years, avocado like sushi was the vehicle for avocado it's to get that avocado into my mouth right um there's lots of great ways to eat avocados but in my opinion this is the best one <laughs> so now just rolling that up tucking it under and rolling it just as simple as it gets i mean like that's good we're done right and that's all almost all of that rice actually there's more here there's enough for several little guys but um like i said i'm not going to cut up another avocado so. so they're just little and like they're barely there but they're spectacular so i am just going to get that much more stingy with this avocado and actually just take a, a little slice of this cuke as well why not then we'll make a few okay so i've got like that's gonna to be too much for one. <laughs> so you just take them, glomp them on there, and then you have, you know, you have your your 
wet finger press down on all of it. And these are a lot, uh, because of how yummy they are, they're pretty forgiving in terms of not getting the uniform to the edges. Because let's face it, this is extremely tedious. It's only a mother's love, honestly, that makes me do these for my little guy, Azariah, because now that he's gotten a taste for this stuff, he doesn't care. I mean, it's not like he's going to turn his nose up to the, if I don't have the these, I he'll eat an avocado roll um, with that. But these are just like next level in terms of flavor for, for people that um, are really sensitive to like sushi nori that's fishy, I would go with the minis. Um, it's like almost my, more of like a roasted, a roasted element to them. And they are all of course roasted, but some are fishier tasting than others. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. So I've got my little tiny avocado guys and I've got, well, I'll take one more here. Might as well, well I could do one that's just cucumber, but you know, it's, they're just this like lovely little thing. And there we go. There's that. I might as well, you know what? It's, I've just so, so little rice left, right? So might as well try to use it all. Okay. Now I'm talking like super, just like, mm -mm, okay. Cause by the time <laughs> I'm working with the like dregs of the sushi rice. I'm done. I'm sick of being sticky. I'm sick of dealing with, you know, I mean, yes, it's wonderful when I can feed people and they want my sushi and I can make like a few, you know, orders um, up and stuff, but um, it's like you get prune hands. Now, these little guys are that simple to roll up as well. And they come out with this cute little sort of adorable um, two bite roll. So I actually always cut them in half. Um, and you know what? A serrated knife, by far superior. Um, a sharp serrated knife, I might add, as opposed to a, um, like these are really like sharp little uh, teeth. Some bread knives are just like, they're gonna cut bread okay, but they're not necessarily going to cut sushi very well, sushi nori, it'll rip. If you don't have the right kind of knife, you're going to rip your nori. Um, and it doesn't matter if like the pattern that's on the nori sheet, like those sort of, it looks like perforated lines on the nori sheet. Those are there so that you can cut it before you've added the rice to it. They are meaningless once the rice is on it. So it looks like there's like these perfect, like, you know, one inch um, little markers but that's irrelevant once you've made your sushi. So we have these all rolled up and these guys here are, you know, a bite size. Like they're just an adorable little thing to have. So I've got um, literally one bite worth of rice left. And the, uh, the next and last thing I'm going to show you then, of course, is the cutting of the rolls. Um, and I might do a sample plate. I want to make sure that uh, Coraline gets some. I know she's had her lunch, but we'll have to figure out, I got to figure out what I'm putting this stuff into. Um, so I'll do that after I've recorded, but I want to make sure that I, um, show you how to cut all this up because it's one of the ways that I, um, like you can take, you know, you can take what you would take deviled eggs in, for example, to, um, like a potluck and you can, lay all your sushi flavors out so people can see what's on every roll. And when I've gone to potlucks, that's for sure what I've done is um, made it so that the sushi was all exposed, right? Uh, not so great when you want to have some today, save it the rest for tomorrow. And when I am preparing it for, like I mentioned, for a family or a friend uh, to feed them a meal, it is all done with saran wrap. Um, there's really no way I don't do these. <laughs> I don't do these for people. This is just for my kid. And it's just so you can see, I would do twice as many of that. And he gets that as his meal. Uh, it's about the equivalent to maybe like one and a half of those, but ultimately 
You gotta please the kids, right? Here's how we cut the sushi rolls. You can go with any thickness as you want, but the thing is, if you get too close together, the nori will rip. So I like to go about an inch. Um, mentioning, of course, that those are irrelevant. You still, you still end up with about the same dimension, but that's the, the beautiful, uh, typical bigger bite of sushi. And then you've got your, uh, say we've got our s smaller roll here. Again, an inch in, and then you can get, I like actually like to take thin ends off um, and like I'll eat those because they're kind of like falling apart. And then like my son and whoever else is having it, the sushi with me will get to enjoy the middle parts. Um, and you can get, let's see here, so there's one, two, three, four, five, that's normal end size though, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine pieces in this roll and it's cut to about, about, about more like three quarters of an inch. Um, and so it depends, like if you want to just snark it yourself, you can cut one of these bad boys nice and fat and just snark snark. Um, if you're a fan of proper digestion, maybe you go with a little smaller of a bite, but, but th that's just, to me, that's art. I know it looks kind of gross to some people, but this is, uh, gonna have way more essential fats than any fish <laughs> anyways. And also let's not underestimate guys, the power of fiber. Um, you know, all the fad diets don't pale in comparison to a high fiber diet which not only, of course, is usually higher in vegetables and fruits, which keep us alive, but, um, you know, roughage and uh, the ability to bind yucky things and get them out of the body. That's, that's just my favorite part about real food. Um, so look at that lovely, lovely guy. It's just lovely. Okay? okay. I just want to show you how I package this because... If you're watching this and you've actually tuned in to, to fully learn how to do this and you're, um, you know, getting excited about starting this or maybe you're cooking along with me. Uh, one of my favorite parts, as I've mentioned several times today, about making anything other than, you know, food that anybody and everybody does make, um, it's, it's about getting to share it with people. It's about having um, someone be able to custom order. It's about being able to have someone... Um, get you know their their sushi and you know also have their dietary restrictions honored and all that stuff there's just so many reasons why knowing how like if you have a vegan friend or you have um someone with food allergies that you have to make food for sushi is right up at the top of the list in terms of what you can do for them of course you could use vegan cream cheese which has always been a huge hit as well um, or you can use, um, you know, all, a lot of other things. There's, this is a crazy list of things that, um, people who have weird dietary requirements would like on their, uh, sushis or in their salads. Um, you know, nuts is also another thing you can do. Um, I enjoy pistachios quite a lot actually on my sushi and, uh, have been known to, to have, you know, like, um, like a like a brazil nut or whatever i've done wheat meat um it's called seitan s-e-i-t-a-n and i've made the wheat meat how i would do this the tofu or the chicken in a stir fry and i've made the wheat meat um barbecue and i've made it you know like pork bites and all kinds of different things out of this stuff and of course it's not gluten free because it's made with wheat gluten but a little bit of that like cut up on a sushi roll is amazing um Totally covers, you know, anybody who might be like, oh, this is gross vegetarian food. No, and I don't even know if they can even tell that it isn't real meat, but whatever. Maybe they, maybe they can. Um, this is what I do. I take my roll that's all cut up and I go sort of diagonally on my sheet of saran wrap. And then I'm taking in my corners, covering that. And I'm just going to be snug about this part here. And then I roll it up. So when they are going to have it, they should... Well, I didn't do that right. They should be able to find an end. So I try to like leave a sort of twisted end. Um, and then if you're of course going to eat it, uh, I, I would pre-cut it before you wrap it. If I know for sure I'm gonna be there to cut it fresh 
for my kid, for example, then I won't cut it, um, especially if it's avocado, because they turn brown, right? So those are uh, definitely a smart uh, thing to not cut unless you're gonna eat it right away. But when you've got avocado on every single roll and you have uh, people that are gonna eat it, there's no harm in just cutting it all and preparing it because I know my teenager wouldn't be able to physically cut the sushi for himself without frustration at the very least. So anyways, we've got our in, we've got our California roll here. Oh, my fingers have gotten all covered in chia. Okay, so I'll take this and that. Roll that up. Now, if a family order or a family makes a bunch of sushi, you can do mix and match. Like you can get your, okay, this is for your lunch, this is for your lunch. Do your saran wrap and do it all like that, um, where people know that they actually can get the variety still. Um, that is a nice treat to have. I, I personally, I think one roll is enough for lunch, but for supper, I, I would say most people would probably want to have one and a half to two rolls. They'd be quite filled. But I've, I've heard tales about people who bought, you know, the six rolls and those were gone and not just by themselves, but between them and like two little kids or between them and their spouse, those were gone, you know. So I guess it just depends on what your appetite is. Um, but I won't bore you with any more of the cutting and wrapping because of course um, that's not as much fun unless there's a beat, right? So thank you very much for watching today. Uh, I just absolutely love getting to share uh, stuff that I've figured out through the learning curve of having done it a thousand times. And also, um, you know, all the little things that we uh, may not be able to like learn off of a cooking show that you can't pause or maybe that you don't necessarily um you know i i i don't come from japan and i don't come from a big city where you learn how to make sushi when you're a kid i had to teach myself this and i had to do it after having those wow experiences at sushi restaurants in calgary going i gotta learn how to make this failing and then, of course, many years later, picking it up out of determination. So uh, kudos to you if you finish the video and you have um, a, a sense of confidence that you're going to make your own sushi now. And please do message, uh, message me, message Coraline to message me, however you want to reach me. Um, I'm easy to find, Marna McManus, and I would love to answer your questions. I, I know that there is a write-up for your ratios and for, you know, just your, I, I'm positive I have done one. So I'll be um, at least at the very least commenting on this post to ensure you have the ratios, if not putting the whole recipe up for you. But thank you so much and um, appreciate you taking the time to spend with me today.